I just started the recording of this open meeting in compliance with CMS. For the record, prior to doing so, I announced that Palmetto GBA would make an audio recording of the open meeting and consented on behalf of Palmetto GBA. So again, welcome everyone to this afternoon's meeting. Uh, we have two presentations scheduled uh, for this afternoon both addressing the proposed LCD treatment of varicose veins of the lower extremities. Uh, for the presenters, you will have uh, 15 minutes for your presentations. I will give you a two-minute warning if, you are, if you're getting close to the time limit. If we have any extra time left during the 15-minute time block, we can take questions. So again, we have two presenters, will be Dr. Jaff and if Dr. Gasparis is able to join us, uh, he will present as well. Before we start, I just want to let everyone know that this, this is a, an important part of the LCD process, having this open meeting uh, today. And it's an important part given that it's a way for stakeholders to provide us here at Palmetto GBA with feedback and any comments or concerns that they may have pertaining to our proposed LCDs. But ultimately, what we obviously want to be able to do is provide the best coverage decisions for our beneficiaries, and this is uh, one of the methods uh, for us to be able to do that. So with that said, let's go ahead and start our presentations. First up will be Dr. Michael Jaff. Uh, Dr. Jaff, I'll let you introduce yourself, where you're from, and you can begin your presentation. Thank you very much, Doctor, and to uh, all, all participating, I appreciate this opportunity. Sorry for the delay, I didn't have the dial-in number. So you have the uh, presentation that was previously provided. I'm on slide one, which is the cover slide. This slide deck represents Boston Scientific's comments regarding the Palmetto GBA proposed LCD and LCA titled Treatments of Varicose Veins of the Lower Extremities, LCD DL39121 and LCA DA58876. And I'll go to slide two. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Michael Jaff. I'm the Chief Medical Officer and Vice President of Clinical Affairs Technology and Innovation for Boston Scientific Corporation. I am a practicing vascular medicine specialist with board certification by the American Board of Internal Medicine and the American Board of Vascular Medicine. I have 27 years of practice in both the private practice, hospital, and academic medical center settings, having run the vascular center at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. I am uh, also a member of the board of several organizations, and as full disclosure you may be able to tell, I am a part-time employee of Boston Scientific Corporation. Let's move on to slide number three. Let me take a moment to thank you on behalf of Boston Scientific. We'd like to thank Paul Meadow for the opportunity to provide comments via this transparent determination process. Uh, March 10, 2020, the Palmetto GBA retired their past LCB and LCA for the treatment of varicose veins and lower extremities with the following statement. Due to controversies in varicose vein treatment, as well as our desire to more deeply engage stakeholders in the LCB process and maintain consistent coverage policies across MAC jurisdictions, Palmetto GBA is retiring the present draft policy as well as the active policy. Uh, slide number four is a uh, disclosure provided by Boston Scientific regarding their work and the work around their product, specifically in Verathena. And Verathena prescribing information is in fact available at the link on the bottom of this slide. Let's go to the next slide. The topic uh, title of this slide is a proposed LCB. Uh, Boston Scientific agrees with the proposed components of conservative management and have no further comments regarding this. Let's go on to slide six, which is titled Proposed LCD Suggested. In an effort to maintain consistent coverage across MAC jurisdictions, 
Boston Scientific proposes the addition of the following information currently included in the First Coast LCD jurisdiction JN and Novitas jurisdictions JH and JL for patients who meet any of the following criteria, the mandatory conservative therapy prior to the invasive procedure may be waived. C4 to C6 disease, hemorrhage, or recurrent superficial thrombophlebitis. Let's go on to slide seven, again entitled proposed LCD. The Palmetto GBA's current LCD includes the following descriptors of different forms of sclerotherapy. These are just for your reference, and I'm not going to read these verbatim. Uh, I'm sure the committee is well aware of this. Let's go on to slide eight. This title says proposed LCD suggested. Boston Scientific proposes adjusting the wording found in the UGSF section to include a differentiation of the types of foam created for ultrasound SF. Uh, this differentiation is recognized in the CPT coding guidance offered by the American Medical Association in their March 2018 CPT assistance article. This wording also appears in the First Coast and Novitas jurisdiction LCDs and thus would be consistent across MAC LCDs. We will make a similar coding clarification recommendation for your corresponding LCA in the next slide. I do have one final comment on this slide, specifically in the foam sclerosis section. We would suggest that the minimum vein size criterion be modified to three millimeters or greater rather than six millimeters. That six millimeters is too large as the minimum vein size criterion, even for truncal veins. Let's go on to slide nine. This also is entitled proposed LCA suggested. Continuing the theme of maintaining consistency across MAC LCDs and LCAs, Boston Scientific recommends the following clarifying statements be included in the Palmetto GBA's associated LCA DA 58876, filling and coding, treatment of varicose veins in the lower extremities. These comments reflect American Medical Association guidance included in the March 2018 CPT assistance article entitled Coding and Competent Veins Treatment and will help with coding accuracy per AMA guidance. Let's move on to slide 10. The title of this slide is um, merely uh, two additional references to consider for the proposed LCD. The first by Jimenez, JC, and colleagues, published in 2021 July. Uh, sorry, there are three. The second is Vasquez et al. in Phlebology in 2017. And the third, Kim P.S. et al., Journal of Vascular Surgery uh, 2020 and the references are listed on that slide. We'd recommend these being added to the bibliography section of the proposed LCD. Again, on behalf of Boston Scientific, I personally thank you for the opportunity to comment. I've provided my email here. Should you have any questions or comments regarding these requests? Once again, thank you so much. I'll turn it back to you. Well, thank you, Dr. Uh, Jaff. That was, that was an excellent presentation, and thank you for, for the comments, part of your presentation. We do have a couple of minutes here remaining in this, this time block. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Jaff? If there are no questions, we can move on. Dr. Gasparis, were you able to get on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Okay, and, and am I pronouncing your, your name correctly? Is it, is it Gasparis? Yeah, pretty close, Gasparis. It's Ferris. Okay, sorry. All right, well, this is Dr. Stroud. Uh, I'm one of the contractor medical directors at Palmetto GBA. Thank you for being with us today. Dr. Gasparis, I will uh, let you go ahead and, just like Dr. Jaff, uh, introduce where you are from, and you can go ahead and start your presentation. You have 15 minutes. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Tony Gasparis, practicing vascular surgeon out of Stony Brook uh, Medicine. Uh, I've been in practice for over almost 20 years. 
and have dedicated uh, my career in the last seven years only to venous therapies and evaluation and management of patients with venous and lymphatic disease. I founded and am the director for the Center for Vein Care at Stony Brook, been on multiple boards and venous societies, uh, and I'm currently the president for the American Venus Forum. And I'm also the course director for major Venus educational programs, uh, both in the U.S. as well as outside the U.S. So thank you again for the opportunity. And really, my goal was to, after reviewing the proposed uh, LCD, is to really outline what concerns and express some of my uh, suggestions regarding some of the CVD statements in the document as well as the treatments that are discussed. So we'll turn to page uh, or slide number four, where uh, represents page two and three in comment one of the LCD. Uh, and that's the current description of that comment. And on slide five is what my suggestions would be where uh, in the current document it talks about superficial uh, deep venous obstruction uh, under venous reflux. And I've narrowed it down to venous reflux in the superficial or deep veins and separated uh, and or venous obstruction, which is basically the definition of chronic venous disease. Uh, under SEEP, SEEP is in the, in the LCD described as categorizing severity CVD, but it actually categorizes the clinical presentation of a patient, what the underlying etiology of CVD is, what anatomic veins are affected, as well as the underlying pathology of those veins. So that really is the true definition of what CEAP uh, represents. On slide number six is again the current language in comment number, in page number three, uh, talking about conservative therapy and the requirement of, of conservative therapy for intervention. But if you look at the, the AVF SVS uh, guidelines published in 2011 on slide number seven, compression therapy is suggested for patients with symptomatic varicozanes, but recommend against the comp of use of compression as the primary treatment symptomatic venous disease in those patients who are candidates for saphenous vein ablation. And that's a 1B recommendation. I know for many years, many policies have mandated the use of compression stockings, but we have very strong recommend, very strong data with and guideline suggestion from SVS and AVF that this is actually a 1B recommendation not to require compression therapy for patients who are candidates for saphenous uh, or varicose vein therapies. So I would suggest or consider eliminating um, uh, con the requirement for conservative therapy. Now on slide number eight, it talks about uh, liquid sc uh, sclerosins and foam sclerosin. That's the exact language in the policy uh, suggested. And slide nine are my comments regarding that and that one of them being that uh, for liquid sclerotherapy, we limit it to patients with varicose veins that are small, meaning less than three millimeters. Now, I know in some of the guidelines and some of the data talk about using liquid sclerotherapy for perforator veins, and I'm not you know, quite sure how that has kind of incorporated in some of the policies, but really sclerotherapy should not be used for perforator veins. Perforator veins are very close to the deep veins and expose the patient at high risk for sclerosis going into the deep system, potentially leading to deep vein thrombosis. Uh, so I would eliminate that part uh, with respect to either liquid or foam sclerotherapy. Under the description of foam sclerotherapy, I think we need to separate, comp you know, physician compounded foam to uh, non-compounded foam, and, and this is the language kind of I, I, I have uh, put in as far as my suggestions, separating those two out. Here in, page, in slide 10 talks about radiofrequency ablation and endovenous uh, ablation as for the policy, and in slide number 11, just a few uh, additions I would add where uh, in the examples they talk about great, small, and uh, accessory saphenous veins, I would be more specific uh, to uh, name the truncal accessory veins, which are the anterior accessory and or posterior accessory uh, great saphenous veins, which are different than any other accessory vein or tributary that people often abuse the system. And, and and, and treat multiple accessory veins, single patient. So I, I would, you know, be very specific in the language there, uh, talking about anterior accessory or posterior accessory, uh, which are axial uh, truncal veins. And same thing in the, in, on the laser ablation, uh, specifically calling out anterior accessory great saphenous or post and or posterior accessory great saphenous, uh, rather than accessory veins. 
On slide number eight, of course, about uh, cyanoacrylate uh, for the policy and 13, same here, instead of accessory, saphenous vein, calling, the, calling out the saphenous veins as great saphenous veins or accessory and, and small saphenous veins. 14 and 15, similarly here with mechanical chemical ablation and slide number uh, 16 uh, discusses uh, stripping. Here I would again talk about detachment of any specific vein, whether it's a great saphenous, anterior accessory, small saphenous, and it's really because it could be small saphenous, it really shouldn't call out common femoral vein. It's the saphenofemoral or saphenopopetial junction. On uh, slide number 18 is really the only addition, which um, I mentioned earlier, uh, so adding to the list of therapies, which are uh, laser RF, uh, MOCA, uh, stripping, and uh, venous seal, uh, add on onto this non-compound foam as a therapy for saphenosine ablation. Slide number 19 um, discusses liquid sclerotherapy for the treatment of uh, uh, varicose veins. Again, here I would change the size to three millimeters, uh, less than three millimeters for saphenous and for varicose vein treatment, and also consider removing peripheral veins. Slide number 21, there's the current uh, policy regarding on page five of the LCD. And on 22, I just, again, some minor changes to call out specifically the anterior accessory versus, you know, broad verbiage of accessory vein, and also adding uh, non compound foam as part of the list of therapies uh, that are currently available for treatment of saphenous vein uh, ablation. 23 and 24 uh, discuss uh, perforators, uh, 23 being the current policy, and 24 the suggestions where uh, I really would not say that incompetent perforators are the most common cause of recurrent varicose veins. There's multiple causes, and I would put strict requirements based on the SVS, ABS guidelines, uh, which uh, mention uh, the need for perforator reflux over 500 milliseconds, that there is uh, no saphenous or symptomatic varicose vein contributing, that that's been previously treated, and that there's an active ulcer uh, present with the perforator in the vicinity of the ulcer. Uh, rather than, let's say, in the thigh. So those are the requirements or the, the, the definition of a pathologic perforator for the uh, ABFSVS and really should be followed in the policy. The last slides talk about uh, limitations for therapy. And on slide number six, I've crossed out what, you know, actually uh, is not a limitation. I mean, inability to wear compression stockings should, is actually, if you consider that, you, you know, conservative therapy for patients, if they can't tolerate it, then obviously the only other option they have uh, would be to, to be offer them treatment if you will have compression as a requirement. Evidence of obliteration of the deep venous system, really, uh, it's more for acute situations. So if they have an acute DVT or, or acute superficial vein thrombosis, KTS is actually, these patients would highly benefit from many venous therapies, so I would not put them as a limitation unless they have absence of a deep system, which is pretty rare. So just a few suggestions as far as what I think falsely are felt, felt to be limitations, but actually these are patients actually that would benefit. And the last slide talks about uh, absence of deep venous obstruction as a requirement. Fortunately, a significant number of patients with chronic venous disease, about 20% of the patients, will have combined superficial and deep venous uh, reflux. And when you have two different uh, systems being involved, the venous hypertension is additive. And treating one of the systems will actually benefit them. So having that, having absence of deep venous obstruction as a requirement is really not appropriate. And there's several papers that show therapies of the superficial venous system in patients who had a previous uh, deep venous thrombosis. is not only safe uh, as far as uh, risk of uh, post-operative thrombosis, but actually does not make the patients worse, but actually improves their outcomes. So that's kind of the summary of my comments uh, and suggestions, and I'll be happy to take any questions, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, present. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Gasparis. Again, an another excellent presentation with some very helpful comments, and we do appreciate it. Any questions for uh, Dr. Gasparis? All right, well, uh, hearing none, that concludes both of our presentations for, uh, for this afternoon. I do want to let everyone know that that's on the line that both of the 
proposed local uh, coverage determinations, the one that we have discussed today, treatment of uh, varicose veins of the lower extremities, and then our other proposed LCD treatment of males with low testosterone, the comment period uh, ends on November the 6th. Uh, 2021, so there is still some time to submit comments uh, for these LCDs. Yeah, I'll just open it up one more time. If there are any questions, uh, we can we can take them. We have just a couple of minutes. Okay, well, if there are no questions, I appreciate everybody again for calling in today. Uh, Dr. Jaff, Dr. Gasper, thank you very much for taking time out of your day today to uh, present to us. Uh, we are going to take a break, and we will reconvene at 2.30 for our next open meeting for Jurisdiction J. Uh, with that, I'll wish everybody a, a pleasant afternoon, and uh, thank you again for joining us.